welcome to the third video lecture in the subject of applied mathematics 2 for the bsc it semester 2 course of university of mumbai friends in the previous video we had seen about the different forms of complex number in the cartesian form in the polar form and also in the exponential form we have seen the algebra of complex numbers that is how to add two complex numbers subtract multiply in the cartesian form we had seen the conjugate of complex number in all the three forms in today's video lecture we are going to proceed ahead and see some more properties of complex numbers in the exponential form in the polar form and also we will be doing a very important result called as triangle inequality so let's start with multiplication of complex numbers in polar form if we have a complex number z1 equal to r1 times cos alpha plus i sin alpha where r1 is the modulus of z1 and alpha is the argument of z1 z2 is r2 times cos beta plus i sin beta where r2 is the modulus of z2 beta is the argument of z2 then multiplication is as we have seen in the cartesian form also it is simply term by term multiplication so we have z1 z2 equal to r1 times this cos alpha plus i sin alpha multiplied with r2 times cos beta plus i sin beta so if i take r1 r2 together what remains inside is cos alpha cos beta plus i times of cos alpha sin beta plus i times of sin alpha cos beta plus i into i becomes i square sin alpha sin beta now i square is equal to minus 1 let us recollect that bring the i terms together so we have r1 r2 multiplied with cos alpha cos beta minus sin alpha sin beta plus i times of sin alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sin beta now if you just carefully look at these terms cos alpha cos beta minus sin alpha sin beta if you recollect your trigonometry it is nothing but cos of alpha plus beta and if you look at sin alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sin beta that is from your trigonometry sin of alpha plus beta so what do we have z1 z2 equal to r1 r2 multiplied with cos of alpha plus beta the first term which we had here now becomes alpha plus beta and the second term is becoming sin of alpha plus beta so this is what is z1 into z2 becoming after multiplying in the polar form so if i want to actually write them write down this as a result what would i write down the observation says that if z1 is having modulus r1 z2 is having modulus r2 then the product z1 z2 if you see carefully the modulus is r1 times r2 and what about the argument z1 had argument alpha z2 had argument beta the product is having the argument alpha plus beta to sum up we can say mod z1 z2 is modulus of z1 into modulus of z2 to say it in words we can say the modulus of product is equal to product of modulus and what happens to argument argument of the product of two complex numbers is alpha plus beta it is sum of the arguments Ar argument of z1 plus argument of z2 it's a very important property it can come as a question asking us to show that product modulus of the product is product of modulus or to show that argument of z1 z2 is argument of z1 plus argument of z2 let us see the same multiplication in exponential form and let us see how it becomes more simple if we have z1 equal to r1 e raised to i alpha z2 equal to r2 times e i beta then what is z1 z2 simple multiplication we can bring the exponential powers together i alpha into i beta we can bring it together i alpha plus i beta i is common so what do we have finally z1 z2 equal to r1 r2 into e raised to i times of alpha plus beta as in the previous case we can very cl clearly see this modulus is r1 r2 and the argument is alpha plus beta so you can see the modulus of z1 z2 is product of modulus of z1 into modulus of z2 and the argument is again the sum of the argument let us go to division using exponential form we have z1 and z2 as before we do z1 divided by z2 we can take out r1 r2 common what remains is e raised to i alpha the denominator e raised to i, I beta comes up e raised to i alpha minus i beta i taken outside we have the argument now alpha minus beta so to sum up what we can we say the uh, modulus of the quotient of two complex numbers is simply r1 by r2 mod z1 divided by mod z2 and when we did multiplication remember argument of z1 into z2 was sum of the arguments we can observe here that the argument now is the difference between the arguments 
so we have argument of z1 by z2 equal to argument of z1 minus argument of z2 as i said in the case of multiplication this division also is a very useful property it can come as a problem the question can be to show that mod of z1 by z2 is mod z1 by mod z2 and show that argument of z1 by z2 is equal to argument of z1 minus argument of z2 let's go to some properties of conjugates and then we'll go to properties of modulus also very important property some of that you can try while you are seeing this video itself the first one is conjugate of conjugate of z you can see the double bar so it is z bar and a bar over that now if we have z equal to x plus i y then we know mod z this z bar is equal to x minus i y and if i want to find the conjugate once again we have to just negate the imaginary part so that gives us actually z back so this is the first property a very trivial property in fact you can pause this video for a, a few seconds and just take a pen and paper and write it down on your book and verify whether this is correct okay you can verify by taking z equal to x plus i y you have to take conjugate two times that's all let's go to the second property the second property is what is the conjugate of sum of two complex numbers so the intuitive uh, idea says that uh, the conjugate of complex numbers if i want to uh, find the sum of two complex numbers and its conjugate it is same as finding the conjugates first and then adding so to say in words it means the conjugate of sum is equal to sum of conjugates so it is easy to verify you can just see it in few seconds that we if we have z1 as x1 plus i1 z2 equal to x2 plus i2 i'm adding z1 and z2 we have already seen this addition it is x1 plus x2 plus i times of y1 plus y2 now the taking the conjugate on both the sides the right hand side becomes minus i times y1 plus y2 so that minus i is because we, because we have taken the conjugate so i just re uh, group these terms taking minus i1 with x1 and minus i y2 with x2 you can see the first term is now x1 minus i y1 which is actually z1 bar and the second term is x2 minus i y2 which is actually z2 bar so we have z1 plus z2 conjugate equal to z1 conjugate plus z2 conjugate similarly you can try this problem right now that show that the conjugate of product is equal to product of conjugates that is z1 into z2 whole bar is equal to z1 bar into z2 bar similarly you can try out the same problem z1 by z2 bar that is a conjugate of the quotient is equal to quotient of the conjugates z1 bar by z2 bar in fact you can try one more problem here to show that conjugate of 1 by z is equal to 1 upon z bar so you can just pause for a few moments and finish it off and then proceed ahead let's go to the next topic that is the properties of modulus mod z is equal to mod of z bar a very important property mod z equal to mod of z bar that is finding modulus for z is same as finding modulus for z bar why is it so because it depends on the formula our formula for modulus is modulus of x plus i y or x minus i y is nothing but square root of the real part square plus the square of the imaginary part so if i am want to find mod of z bar it is mod of x minus i y which is square root of x square plus minus y whole square which is x square plus y square which is nothing but mod of z so very important property mod z equal to mod z bar we should remember this the second property is what is the modulus of product as in the conjugate it is nothing but product of the modulus it is easy to find out just take z1 equal to x plus x1 plus i y1 z2 equal to x1 plus i y2 or we have seen just now in polar form we have also seen this in the case of exponential form so need not do it once again but we need to state it as a property the third property is also we have seen again in the division of complex numbers using polar and exponential form mod of z1 by z2 is equal to mod z1 divided by mod z2 you should remember all these three properties very important properties let's go to two important results first one z plus z bar equal to two times of real part of z i am not going to prove it right now but i will i have a request to you that you again pause this video for a few seconds and do this yourself and feel confident that now you can do some problems in complex numbers very simple take z equal to x plus i y z bar equal to conjugate of that x minus i y add these two you will get plus i y minus i y getting cancelled you will get 2x but what is x the real part of z that's the solution to this but solution part i am leaving to you it is very important result which we are going to use to prove the triangle inequality so let us assume this result the next result is again in two four parts first part is show that real part of any complex number is less than equal to its modulus the second part is imaginary part is also less than equal to modulus of the complex number let's work it out suppose our z is x plus iy then the real part is x 
and modulus of z is square root of x square plus y square. So we want to show that real part of z, the serial part of z is less than equal to mod z. Let us assume that it is the reverse, that the real part is greater than mod z, we shall arrive at a contradiction. So if the real part is greater than mod of z, we have x greater than mod z is square root of x square plus y square x square on both the sides we have x square is greater than equal to x square plus y square x square is a common term it gets cancelled we have 0 greater than y square in simple words y square is less than 0 y square is negative but uh, y is a real number so the square of that cannot be negative so whatever we had assumed that the real part is greater than equal to mod z is not true it is false therefore real part of the any complex number is less than equal to mod of z. Similarly, we can show that imaginary part of z is less than equal to mod z. It will just replace x wherever we had with y. If we combine these two results, the first result says z plus z bar is two times of real part of z and combine it with real part of z less than equal to mod z, I have z plus z bar is less than equal to two times of mod z. Let us remember this very important result. We shall come back to it when we solve the triangle inequality. So what's the triangle inequality? It says modulus of z1 plus z2 is less than equal to mod z1 plus mod z2. Now understand that if you want to show that a number a is less than equal to b, it is enough to show that a square is less than equal to b square. So what we are actually going to prove is the square of mod of z1 plus z2 is less than equal to square of mod z1 plus mod z2. So let us start with mod of z1 plus z2 whole square. By our formula of mod z square, we have mod z square is z into z bar. So we have this is right hand side as z1 plus z2 multiplied with conjugate of z1 plus z2 and we know that conjugate of sum is sum of conjugates so z1 plus z2 multiplied with z1 bar plus z2 bar on term by term multiplication we have this z1 z1 bar plus z1 z2 bar plus z1 bar z2 plus z2 into z2 bar the first and the last term is nothing but mod z1 square and mod z2 square observe the middle two terms z1 z2 bar and z1 bar z2 bar the first observation is they are conjugates of each other and if we uh, keep in mind that these are conjugates of each other we can think it as z and z bar we have just now seen a result that z plus z bar is less than equal to two times of mod z so what happens is this now observe that this equal 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 three equalities in this proof have now become this made this as less than equal to so from where this less than equal to has come the inequality has come because of the middle two terms <coughs> we have seen the previous result z plus z bar is less than equal to two times of mod z so that is the reason why we have a less than equal to sign here okay this is equal to mod z1 square plus we have seen that modulus of product is product of modulus so we have 2 into mod z1 into mod z2 bar we have also seen that the modulus of conjugate and the number is same so this is same as mod of z2 bar is same as mod z2 now we can just think this as a square plus 2ab plus b square so finally we have mod z1 plus z2 whole square equal to less than equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 whole square but this implies that mod of z1 plus z2 is less than equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 a very very powerful and a useful tool let us see how this can be used to solve the problem so problem based on triangle inequality show that mod of z1 minus z2 is greater than equal to mod of mod z1 minus mod z2 now i'm not going to prove it in this lecture but i shall give you three hints for you to do it immediately after this lecture gets over and this is the last slide of today's video lecture so what is the hint number one hint number one is you have to show that the left hand side is greater than equal to modulus of mod z1 minus mod z2 so first show that it is greater than equal to mod z1 minus z2 then show that it is greater than equal to mod z2 minus mod z z1 how to show that write mod of z1 as mod of z1 minus z2 plus z2 simply we are adding and subtracting z2 now you can group the first two terms of mod of z1 minus z2 together and z2 left out separately and use the triangle inequality similarly write mod of z2 as mod z2 minus z1 plus z1 bring this z2 minus z1 together z1 separate and use the triangle inequality if you do these three things then the result is a very trivial result you can try it out immediately so that's all for this video lecture 3 in the next lecture we are going to see how to find square roots of complex numbers and then we shall move to the very important theorem known as the Denus theorem till then have a nice time